the implications on markets are going to be huge. First of all, America, if, it, if the country is not already in recession, will very soon be in recession when you look under the hood of the published data. So really what we're saying is that uh, between now and the early months of next year, the dominating trend will be recession. And that has huge implications for a highly valued equity markets around the world. But there will be a proper cyber attack, which will shut down bank computers, airline computers, national grid computers, hospital computers, basically shutting down uh, the entire system. I think that is a high risk that we will see turn out before the end of September. Welcome to this enlightening video where Simon Hunt shares his expert insights on the potential cyber threats. He discusses the high likelihood of a significant cyber attack before the end of September, targeting banks, airlines, and national grids. Hunt also explores the geopolitical dynamics in Europe and the Middle East and their implications for global markets. Additionally, he provides a thorough analysis of the current economic conditions, predicting a looming recession in the U.S. Stay tuned as Simon Probably, Hunt connects the dots um, the Microsoft between cyber failure threats, geopolitical was a unrest cyber and attack. economic it was a dress rehearsal, probing where the weaknesses are. Who mounted it? That's a big question. I don't know the answer. All I, all I can say is that company is known to have had or to have strong relations with the U.S. intelligence community. So who knows? But it was a dress rehearsal that there will be a proper cyber attack which will shut down bank computers, airline computers, national grid computers, hospital computers, basically shutting down uh, the entire system. I think that is a high risk that we will see before the end of September. Why? I think that the group who control the levers of power behind the throne are so desperate to stop President Trump from regaining the White House that they will do almost anything, if not everything, to prevent that from happening. I think it's safe to say that uh, the assassination attempt was an attempt on his life, and it's pretty clear he was a very, very lucky man in that he turned his head at the last minute, otherwise he wouldn't be in the race. Um, so I think uh, there are several options that the powers behind the throne will attempt. One is a cyber attack. Two is an escalation of the war, either or both in Europe and the Middle East. What we do know, what we have written about since the middle of May, is that in early May there was a NATO meeting in a Baltic uh, country in which the NATO guys told the government representatives that we are planning <clears throat> to attack Russia. So what we heard just a few days ago is that part of Russia's preparations is that they are building prefabricated hospitals right across the country. What's that telling? I think here in the Middle East, it's very likely that Israel overtly or covertly supported by America and the UK will launch a blitz against Hezbollah. What's interesting is that the president of Syria either, I don't know whether he's still there, has been the last few days in Moscow. It's interesting that Assad and Erdogan are mending fences brokered by Russia. So I would not rule out possibility, it's not a forecast, but a high risk that we will see turmoil in the Middle East, in the region where I live, namely Dubai. The consequences, if that does happen, the consequences are enormous. I don't have to spell them out, but you've got a coalition of forces on the one side lined up to support Israel, and on the other side lined up to support Syria and indirectly Hezbollah. Even if it's not war, the implications on markets are going to be huge. First of all, 
America, if, it, if the country is not already in recession, will very soon be in recession. When you look under the hood of the published data, with increasing, a lot of it is increasingly being manipulated. So uh, you will have not a resilient, strong U.S. economy, one that is either in or heading into recession. You can see globally that the services sector, which has propped up economic activity in most countries in the second quarter is turning over and manufacturing which let's face it is the powerful sector that provides permanent jobs and that remains weak and in certainly in recessionary trends both in america and in europe china china as the leadership is more concerned with stabilizing the economy putting a, a flaw under it rather than stimulating it it has no wish to follow the monetary policies of the West. So focus is on manufacturing, industry trends, and from that we get employment follows. But there's going to be no real stimulus. So probably China's GDP will more or less be the same figure as last year, might be a little bit less, unlikely to be any better. So we look at China, we look at nominal GDP, not real GDP, because those numbers are also played around with. Nominal GDP last year was 4.7%. I'd expect to be more or less the same this year. So really what we're saying is that uh, between now and the early months of next year, the dominating trend will be recession. And that has huge implications for a highly valued equity markets around the world. And we expect by, say, March next year, that equity markets globally will fall, will have fallen by 30 to 40 percent, which, of course, of course, that will shake out base metal markets. So we would expect similar falls for base metals like copper. The other side <coughs> of the picture, we will continue to see gold being bought, as gold really is a safety valve to intense geopolitics and cleared currencies. I think it won't be long before China will announce that its currency is being supported by the gold that its citizens own, which on the last count was 25,000 tons plus. Then you have to look at what is BRICS coming up with. There's a paper prepared by a Russian and a Chinese economist that will be discussed at the BRICS summit meeting in August. And the <coughs> basis of that paper is that 40% of the proposed new currency will be gold, and 60% will be local currencies of member countries, but linked to go. So BRICS will be producing a currency that sees gold coming back into the monetary system of their member countries. We are step-by-step -step approach.